Egan Bernal finally posted his power data. Very interesting. So we'll go to stage two first. So stage two finishes up Gibraltar Road, and we'll just look at the um, results. So old Egan Bernal won. He put 21 seconds into Mike and 25 seconds into Adam Yates. So we'll go on to this ride here, which is Gibraltar Road. So you can basically see four-hour ride, pretty chilled out, weighted average power, 250. So, you know, for him, it's, it's, not, it's not crazy. Um, and, yeah, so pretty flat stage generally, a little bit of climbing here or there, and then basically finishes up Gibraltar Road. I mean, 2,500, he's still decent climbing, but, like, most of it's at the end. So anyway, scroll through, pretty chilled the beginning part, like, up these climbs, just doing 200 watts in the wheel, like, it's not, it's not, I mean, the brake had gone, it was pretty chill, they were going to go get it back. Uh, so anyway, we'll just go down to the bottom, so keep going down, and to Broad to climb, so it's, a, you know, more or less 10k at 8%, he averaged 21k an hour, and he did 350 watts. Now, Bernal's weight on Strava is 59 kilos, which I'll take, I think he might be a little less, um, but you know, anyway. So, about 6 watts per kilo for, sorry, 6 watts per kilo for about 27 minutes, which is, you know, very good, very good, um, considering it's in the middle of the stage. I mean, like, mo I mean, an average pro rider might be able to do six watts per kilo for 20 minutes, probably, you know, like, the average one, if you weigh 70 kilos, 60 kilos, you can probably do, like, 70 to 60 kilos, you can probably do around 400 to 430 for, um, 20 minutes, so, you know, six watts per kilo for 20 minutes is, is solid, um, for, like, an average world tour rider, but for sure, at the end of the stage, it's a very different story, and also, at the end of, um, at the end, in like the middle of a race as well, is even, even more impressive. So anyway, we'll go down. So if we just analyze this, I mean, so I made it, basically, I made a video about this, uh, just the highlights or whatever, but you can see basically he's sitting in the wheels here and like in the wheels, you can see it's pretty surgy, but generally it, it's not too crazy um, at the beginning because we had BMC on the front and then Talgate and Hart picked up a little bit. Um, so we'll just take it from here. So basically, you can see he averaged 400 watts for the last six minutes, last 2k, which is pretty, pretty good, pretty good going from the young lad. And again, anyway, you can see here, so he's just he's he's doing good tempo here, and he just launches it here. So he does a little attack. It's not actually that big of an attack. He just averages 500 watts for 20 seconds, peak at 612, and burnout has got a pretty good sprint on him. So it wasn't wasn't really a full gas um, attack, but I think because everyone was so tired and because it was so steep, he just managed to put a big gap in. So we did that little burst, and so if we just count literally from his attack to the end, you can see he averaged about 402 watts for the last six minutes. Out of 10% gradient, he was averaging 20k an hour, which is, which has been insane. Like 20k an hour for 10% gradient is is fast, like super fast. Um, well over six watts per kilo. Uh, so if we do 400 watts divided by 59, 6.8 watts per kilo uh, for the last for the last five six minutes. Which is uh, pretty incredible, considering most people fresh can't really do 6.8 watts per kilo. Um, I can't do that fresh at all, and he can do it at the end of a climb. After holding, you know, around 6 watts per kilo just before that, five and a half to 6 watts per kilo, so he held that for like 25, 20 minutes, 22 minutes, and was like, "All right, boys, I'm I'm going." Held 6.8 for the last <laughs> the last bit and just dropped everyone. Pretty insane, to be honest. Um, cadence interesting. I, I I said that in my video. Um, I'll link the video below. His cadence wasn't high. His cadence was only 79. Um, which I think, you know, is interesting because a lot of people like the washing machine, um, I like Chris Room and go for like a hundred or whatever, but I think on this steep stuff, maybe you didn't have a, maybe you only had a 30 cassette, so you just couldn't, couldn't spin up, but even so at 20k an hour, it should be, should have been fine. Uh, I think it's probably more just like he just prefers that, prefers slightly lower cadence maybe. Uh, maybe his heart was feeling it because it was such a long effort, he was, his like lungs and heart were feeling quite tired. But anyway, you can see, to win a mountain top finish in sort of a world tour race, this is, you know, a second tier world tour race, it's not like the, the peak, peak world tour. But even so, you need to be doing like 6 watts per kilo for the last 20 minutes to half an hour, and have a good attack at the end, about 6.8 or so. So anyway, that's pretty insane numbers. I'm really happy that Bernal posts all his power data, um, we'll give him a bit of kudos, <clears throat> because Sky don't like him to do this, uh, but it's good he's done it, and it's just interesting to be able to see what, what numbers these guys can do off in the middle of racing, and I think it's very hard to comprehend how fast these guys are, considering it's racing. Because, again, you, you hear 6 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, and amateurs and, like, continental riders can do that. But I think the difference is to be able to do it at the end of a race, in the middle of a stage race, that's really when it's incredible. And even then, to be able to launch that attack at the end, like, 6.8 watts per kilo for the last, like, 5-6 minutes, it's just, just, like, crazy. Like, he just went 
because no one was coming close. So cheers burnout for that one. Uh, so that was on this stage here. So, sorry, that was on that stage here, stage two. So if we now go on to stage three, I'll just... Oh, TJ Van Harden got the win. So this is a time trial. Now, burnout is pretty good at the time trial uh, for a young lad. So you can see here, TJ won, Patrick Bevan, Tao Gagan Hart, Lawson Craddock. Um, but anyway, you can see that. We'll scroll down a little bit. Egan Van lost a minute 23. So you might be like, minute 23. That's, that's quite a lot of time loss. And to be fair, it is. But he still averaged 49k an hour uh, for a pretty... You know, it's not flat, but it's not, not exactly like massively hilly. So it's good average speed. 367 watts and look his weighted average power is the same as his average power so obviously team sky were like you know mate try and hold around 370 watts for that sort of effort and i think he did he likes his power meter quite a lot to be fair he <laughs> keeps on going on about it but you can see here it's a very interesting effort 367 watts is about 6.2 watts per kilo i believe for the young lad uh for 40 minutes uh so that's that sort of shows you how strong he really is like when he's well fresh i mean he's still obviously in the middle of a race he can do 6.2 watts per kilo for 41 minutes, which is pretty insane. You think, that's why in the Dauphiné, uh, not the Dauphiné, in Tour of Romandie, we didn't post his power data. I was predicting about 6.5, and, and I think that's probably right, because if you can do 6.2 in a time trial, he's probably better at climbing. He probably, I mean, 6.5 for sure in a, uh, for 20, 25 minutes. But it's pretty, it's pretty good, like, seeing the young lad actually um, just time trialing so well. I mean, he's really... I mean, he lost a minute, okay, I can't get around that, it's not great, but for a very lightweight lad, and he's only just started, to, like, properly time trying, like, he'll get a lot better, it's pretty, pretty solid from the man, so the man, I believe, is in second place overall in the GC, and it's just great to have this power day, like, 370 watts, like, obviously, that's not incredible raw power, but if you just think about, like, his watts per kilo, it's just insane, so anyway, we'll go on, we'll go on the little leaderboard and uh, see, so I'm not sure who Gato Di Marmo is. Potentially, that will be uh, Filippo Ganna. Um, but you can see here, all the guys... Well, that's obviously fake news, because there's no way he's done that much. But Lawson Craddock, again, he only did 400 watts. Brandon McNulty, again, he's a very strong lad. Good time trials. But you can see here, if you look at the watts, there's a 30-watt difference here. Uh, and he's lost maybe 30, 40 seconds. So you can tell that Bernal has got pretty good CD8, because you think normally in a 30-watt 30 30 watt difference at that sort of speed... Uh, would be maybe a minute or something, uh, like a, a lot more than that in my opinion. Um, so it's obvious that Van is pretty error already. Um, this bloke, I'm not, I'm not really sure who he is, because there's no way he averaged like 493 watts for, for that sort of duration, and there's no way he averaged like 500 watts for the first bit. But anyway, we'll ignore that young lad. Um, so you can see here again, interesting from Lawson Craddock, he averaged... 370 weight, uh, what happened here? Oh, I think he might have taken in some, yeah, he, he included the end of his data, so if we just get rid of that, it was more like 390 watts, uh, which is basically why he beat Bernal, uh, so, but he beat Bernal by, what, uh, 40, 45 seconds, so it's, it's always going to be tough with Bernal on the, on the flat time trials, but he's done, he's done pretty well, TJ Gavang is a solid time trialist, and we look at Brendan McNulty, and you'll see again that he, he had pretty good power, to be honest, this young man. Um, he averaged 400 watts or something, but you can just tell that obviously his drag is pretty bad. Um, his CDA is not great. It obviously, he raced for rally, so they don't have as much um, error testing as other teams, potentially. Um, they made the equipment's not as quite as good, but you can tell for sure that he's a super strong rider just because of the numbers. Um, but just in terms of time trialing, the aerodynamics is such an important thing that if you don't have that support, you just won't do well. And I think that's one thing that Bernal has. He has the support from Sky. They know how to make people be good at TTs. Lander, they got they got Mikael Lander pretty solid at time trials. Uh, so he's in a good good place to develop, and it's great having all this data. So basically, if you want to be like Bernal, you've got to be banging out 6.2 watts per kilo on the flat. <laughs> so 360 watts for 40 minutes, more or less. 367 watts. And on the climbs, 6 watts per kilo for half an hour at the end of a stage, mid-stage race, and then bang out 7 watts per kilo, a little less than that, for the last 5 minutes. So cheers, Bernal, for all your power data. You're an absolute G. I hope Team Sky don't mug, you, mug us all off and be like, no, nah, you can't post any data, because uh, this is great stuff, and I'm, I'm loving this. Every time I see you upload, I'm like, come on, mate, this is absolutely perfect. So anyway, cheers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.